So I'm trying to create some works for a Twitter art um, exhibition and they're five by seven, which I've measured out here on my page. And I have not decided what I want to do. So I'm just gonna do some sketching and see if some ideas come to me. The first one I'm doing here is just based on a photograph of one of my daughters. And I'm just gonna loosely line her in. I have her photograph here on the computer next to me but I'm not really as eager to make it about her as I am interested in just getting a feel of a picture of a child. Uh, I'm starting to realize how um, it's really relating to childhood and imagination that people respond to the works I do even though they're often based on my children but the purpose is not to make pictures of all my children or I'd never be able to part with any of them. The purpose is really to um, just connect with other people and find something that I can treasure that they could treasure as well. Sometimes it's in a photo, sometimes it's just in an idea. And when I have the chance to work off a photo, it gives me an opportunity to um, do more detailed work. So I have several ways of approaching the art. Sometimes it's very loose and organic and I don't have an actual picture to work off of so the painting or picture needs to be much more loose and sometimes I have an actual photograph I'm referencing as a guide. So in this case she was wearing a big bundled up scarf of mine outside. She was riding her bike and I think the image of just a little girl with an enormous scarf was just a cute one to focus on. I've been starting to learn over the last few years, if you're um, an artist who's always looking for their style, um, it's a big, it's a big uh, part of an artist's journey is figuring out why they paint what, or draw what they do, um, what themes they're attracted to. Uh, one of the things I found is that if I went back to my earlier works, I saw very similar themes. Uh, when I thought too hard about what other people would want from me, I think it got a little bit complex there because I was always worried about whether something was sellable as opposed to whether it told the stories that I wanted it to tell. Now when you get to selling your stories, whether it's a feeling and emotion or it's uh, more of like a color is even abstract work has an emotion to it or a feeling then the closer you get to what it is that you feel and you want to what what story you're telling the sooner you'll be content with your work and not always looking for someone else to inform it but that can be hard I do like these little sketch projects though because sometimes I feel like I have too many ideas and they're getting away from me. I can't get them all down so um, doing some small versions of pictures sometimes that's the only one I'll ever do and sometimes I'll come back to that and do it again. It's important when you're, you're referencing a photo, in this case I haven't given myself like lines for accuracy I'm just eyeballing it um, just compare shape to shape so when I'm looking at her eyebrow I'm trying to follow the line of her eyebrow I'm not trying to look at it as I think an eyebrow shape would be I'm trying to just see what's on the on the photograph what shape I'm seeing she's looking down and she has a slightly worried frown and then I'm judging the distance to her hairline and she has some sweet little curls coming down. One thing I did learn is uh, when you want to do realism or when you're at least practicing your skills with realism you have to have a picture. Um, for a long time I kind of deluded myself that artists were painting strictly from their imagination, especially if the scene was imaginative. I'd think, oh, they must be 
like really good artists to get such a realism in a fantasy picture but you know what they've as far as I can tell <laughs> they've always got a model or a photograph that they've worked from people don't do realism completely with no references so what I try to do is when I'm using a reference I'm banking that information so that when I do my looser work that's completely out of my imagination um, you'll see a difference it's it's a little bit vaguer it's there's no picture for me to reference so the lighting and everything is all in my imagination and so it's going to be a little bit looser when drawing I often also consider what um, appeals to me the most about the image what caught my attention um, in this case she decided to wear this little bow in her hair which I considered as a congruent with her wearing a scarf um, not really it's not but you know wrong season it was a little sparkly bow but I'm a big fan of seeing kids dress up and do their own thing so I'm going to leave the bow but I did consider should I make it larger and more extreme um, that's the thing you can do with your art you can make the art say your story figure out what you want it to say in this case I thought the scarf was actually the large object so I'm gonna leave it um, it's looking a little like a boa at the moment which was not the feeling I was going for either so I think what's going to happen is when I color it, I'm not going to use the colors necessarily in the photograph. I'm going to tone them down a bit. Um, I really am drawn to using more neutral, soft tones, blacks, grays, beiges, and I like the theatricalness to just be in the shapes and in the subjects. Um, she's concentrating very hard here, but even with the bow and the big scarf, she's serious. She's taking herself very seriously. So I think that's maybe the magic of this particular little little drawing. So we're gonna, I'm gonna find another picture to work on, um, get started on that. And once I have the two sketches, I will start adding some gouache paint and we'll see if they work or not. Thanks for watching.